Hey guys, welcome to another round robin video. Now, um, these round robin videos might come uh, more often in between uh, the series here, uh, just because it looks like um, the viewers over on my scale model channels kicked in. There's a lot more subscribers there, and they're answering questions and stuff. Okay, let's start out this round robin with uh, Marnius Augustus Calgar. He just posted a video, sort of a rant, about airbrushes and the standard uh, brush. Uh, and he explains that he does not use an airbrush and he probably never will. And he makes a very good point. This is not a magic tool. It right? doesn't mean that you go get one and get a whole setup and then you start uh, pushing paint out of the the airbrush here and then suddenly you'll be making really cool looking models. No, this is just a tool a tool among the rest of the tools that you have in your arsenal for doing this hobby okay and everything else is up to you if you don't know how to use the tool if you don't know how to apply it it's your shit your stuff is going to come out looking like crap anyways so like people like um Marnius who don't use an airbrush and don't think they ever will it's like again it's a preference thing okay he puts out some awesome great models and he doesn't use an airbrush okay and that's just how he does his work so he does his painting for me, the airbrush is a tool of convenience and simplicity, okay? Uh, with an airbrush, you could do certain effects and stuff like that yeah, that you would need to do with an airbrush in less than half the time. The other reason why I use airbrushes is because I've converted everything over to acrylics, um, everything I do. I just, but using aerosol cans to uh, primer my stuff or to coat my stuff is a major pain in the ass for me. Uh, especially when I have to take it outside and do it stuff. I'm a lazy guy. I really don't want to like go out and primer my models or put a clear coat on it or what have you. So everything is converted into acrylic type of paints or mediums that I shoot through an airbrush for, um, from primering to um, base coating. So that's one of the advantages that I like that the airbrush gives me. So again, it drills down to whether or not an airbrush is going to help you out or not. And that's really up to you. Okay, don't let any of these videos or anyone else convince you otherwise. I mean, all I can do is just give you uh, hints and, and suggestions and stuff like that, and then the rest is up to you. If you want to use an airbrush or stick with um, paintbrush, and honestly, airbrush is only like, you know, like maybe 70% of my painting. The rest, I have to use a brush. There's no way you can get certain details in with an airbrush unless you have those ultra, ultra, super expensive airbrushes. All right, Tesla Dark Moon wrote, the expiration date on a CO2 tank is when it needs to be hydro tested again, usually about $20 to have the test done. You only need to replace the tank if it fails the hydro test. If it passes, it gets certified for another two to five, five years, depending on the type of tank. Just a heads up. Um, okay, thanks. I did not exactly know what's up with the expiration date thing since uh, when I was using CO2 tanks, I leased them. Okay, and all they said was, oh, it's expired. We'll just you know switch it out. Okay, Model Man Tom wrote, Horror story, I used the wrong thinner in my enamels once. Once, the thinner turned the enamel into a little wad of gum. Result, $25 single action airbrush thrown away. No saving it. Very glad I screwed up on a cheap airbrush and an extra reason not to go expensive on your first airbrush. Learn on a cheap airbrush, go pro when you're more competent. Good point, Model Man Tom. Um, you have to be very careful because there's some... Uh, thinner mediums that has a weird reaction to certain paints. Uh, for example, Vallejo never um, thin it with alcohol. Alcohol gums up Vallejo and I get a little tiny gumming effect when I use uh, Windex because um, Windex contains alcohol uh, and I would and I counter that by uh, really washing, you know, cleaning my airbrush uh, when I'm done with it in long periods of time. Okay, simple models wrote, is one one thinner easy to do or hard because I don't understand what it is. Um, I just completely forgot that when you're using airbrush, we're talking about ratios and mixes and stuff like that. And a lot of people who hasn't started doing airbrushing or even heard of doing airbrushing, uh, they wouldn't know, understand what the ratios and stuff is. When I, we say one to one, it's, just one, one uh, it's part paint and part thinner or whatever thinner medium you're using. For example, when I say... Um, one part somber gray and one part Windex, okay, and then I put two drops of somber gray in my airbrush, then I would match with two drops of thinner. 
if I say uh, a one to two mix, that'd be one part um, paint and uh, two part thinner. So if I put two drops of paint in my airbrush, then I would put four drops of thinner. Okay, and that's how the ratio works out when we talk about ratios. Now, Warp Game says, now I've run my brush on CO2 before and I really didn't care for it, but I never tried running on an HPA source. Have you ever tried using something like nitrogen to run your airbrush? Um, I've always, so far I've been saying CO2 tank, CO2, CO2. You can actually load it up with nitrogen as well. Um, I don't know what the difference is because I never used nitrogen to shoot uh, through an airbrush, but I would assume it's the same thing. Uh, except you might get a little more giddy when you're working on your uh, models. However, other than that, I don't know if there is a difference between using CO2 and nitrogen and it affects the paint that comes out of your airbrush. I'm not quite sure about that. Okay, LOL, oh my god, swear words. Just had a thought. You could potentially use just a paintball tank, a CO2 tank, couldn't you? Couldn't you? They don't hold as much as the sizes you're talking about, but I have like four to five of those things. Pronunciation would be nice in between some of these sentences here, guys. Um, okay, um, yeah, CO2 tanks for um, paintballing is pretty much just CO2 tanks, but little small ones. What you can do is actually set up a really cool system where you can have a pipe, you know, where, where all the uh, CO2 tanks uh, hook in. And all you do is just put them valves and have a tight pipe go into a regulator and then just turn them on or off or however you which uh, way you like. That would be a cool little system to have and uh, doable. Uh, just you're going to be, you know, switching out a lot of those tanks to get it refilled and stuff. Oftazone says, my bad, I meant to say portable air tank that could be filled using gas station air compressor, one provided for your car tires. Some stations still offer free air, some are dollar seventy-five per use, so yeah, don't no one go blowing themselves up now. Now that was um, part of a conversation that was going on on um, one of the comments on the videos. Um, Someone mentioned uh, portable air tank. I didn't quite understand what he was getting at. Um, Ulf, Ulf the zone cleared it up. Now, um, I didn't actually think of this. I did look at tanks that I could hook up with uh, my air compressor, but I didn't think that I could just uh, get it uh, pumped over at an air station. I did a little more research, and um, yeah, these portable air tanks, which runs about maybe 30 bucks for a five gallon tank, you can actually use those take it to the air station and uh, get it pumped okay and then uh, you could use it as a air source okay um, and or if you have an air compressor you could do it yourself uh, by hooking and rigging up the the right proper adapters and stuff like that um, so that actually might be a good way to go and a cheap way to go as well um, now um, depending on how much PSI is pushing out of the tank I take it from what I understand is how much PC, uh, PSI is pushing is pushed into the tank when you're filling it up. For example, this compressor um, goes up to 60 PSI's and then does an auto shut off. So if I hooked up a tank to it, all I have to do is flip it on and let it fill up until it hits 60 PSI's in the tank. And this compressor should auto shut off, and that would be when I know that um, I'm good. Or I could just look at the dial in the tank. Uh, as you can tell, it comes with a dial in the tank, and I'll show you how many PSI is pushing out of that tank. So um, you could even push it even further if you go to a gas station. The air source that they pump in uh, has different PSI's. It might be over 100 or whatever. Uh, either way, what you would do is you you, you grab one of those tanks, um, rig it up so that you could you rig up all the adapters and stuff so you could hook up a regulator uh, to it and uh, maybe even a moisture trap. I don't know if you'll need one, but you probably would uh, for this type of thing. And then just pull the hose out and into your airbrush. So, yeah, that's the viable way to do it. I think maybe for 30 bucks, I might just try it out. Maybe do a video on that, see how that works out. Uh, but, yeah, that's another way to go. Now, talking about this, this also brings back to a really old, old school way of having an air, air source, which is using a car tire. And I've done this before, a long time ago, and totally forgot about it. There are these adapters out there you can get, and they're about like that big, okay, that you would twist on in the uh, the, the tire, um, and then you just twist it on and then attach a uh, air hose to it that connects to your air, uh, airbrush, and then the air coming out of it will be controlled by your airbrush, and you just spray now. Uh, it works, but the problem is you don't have control of the PSIs, and it's only the PSI that's coming out of the tire, and it gets flat really soon, so you have to keep, you know, keeping your uh, 
tire inflated. But that is another option if you ever want to go old school. Okay, War Tiger wrote, is it better to have the fan on at the back of the booth or on top? Um, normally I would say back or on the bottom because if it's on top then that means the fan is strong enough to pull the fumes up and while you're spraying might pull the paint away from where you're spraying at. So um, that's the only reason why I've never really seen fans on top of the booth itself. Uh, maybe at an angle on top. Uh, the, re the reason why, is here, here's how it works, okay. Uh, the fan pulls a certain amount of CFMs, okay, that's cubic feet of air through the fan itself. If it's on the back, you need a lot more CFMs to push the air through because it's on the side. If it's on the bottom, you need half of that, okay, because using natural gravity, the fumes fall down and the fan grabs the rest of it and pulls it out. Okay, so if you had a fan on top, that means you're going to have to pull the fumes and, and whatever else uh, up upwards so that's going to take a fan that's going to have some powerful uh, CFMs to pull the, the fumes up so doing that uh, might just pull the fumes and the paint up as well so you probably won't get that much paint onto the surface of the model itself so again I'm not really quite sure on this but that would be the logical reason why you wouldn't put a fan on top of the boot 77XR Kuhn says just curious about this point why are you using Tamiya lacquer thinner rather than Tamiya thinner with acrylics? Uh, he's talking about Tamiya acrylic thinner. Um, that is actually a little find that I found over at ProMolar's uh, forums that they were discussing. And I'll go ahead and show you what the discussion is. Now you guys might want to sit back, uh, those that don't, it's not going to use Tamiya paints, but it's also important to know that I use lacquer thinner to thin the Tamiya paints I'm using for the style. 96% um, Isopropyl alcohol has always been the means for modelers to thin Tamiya paint because of the false assumption that they are acrylics. Tamiya paints are not acrylics. They are only advertised so to probably make them look less toxic. Tamiya both offers an alcohol type of thinner and a lacquer thinner. The quickest way to distinguish the two thinners is that the alcohol type thinner contains a blue cap while the lacquer type has a yellow cap. You want the Tamiya thinner with the yellow cap. Tamiya paint spray much better and go on much smoother when using the lacquer painter I'm sorry the lacquer thinner you will also notice that um, less of that dreaded sandy buildup on the surface of the model often obtained with um, Tamiya XF paints this is very important because I apply successful successive layers of paint when working towards the highlights therefore it's very important that all these layers spray on smooth to help ensure a nice sound base coat um, yeah, it's a little m much to read there, but this is what I found. This is actually an article at uh, Armorama that someone wrote, um, I guess, about uh, base coating um, a model. Either way, I can confirm that there is a big difference. The yeah, Ambam 26 wrote, I've got a compressor already in my garage, but I'm not sure if the airline that comes with the airbrush will suit as it comes from a 1 8 uh, BSP male to a one-fourth BSP male, female adapter. I hope you can help. Um, as long as the uh, air tank you have uh, pushes enough CFI through a long hose, I don't know how long it's going to take to get into your house, but as long as you get the pressure to go through the hose just fine, then you're good. The only difference is um, all you have to do is just get the right adapter, and there's all these different adapters out there. Go to TSP Global, tcpglobal.com, and then they have all these adapters. Just get the right adapters until you can get into an airbrush hose uh, when it finally gets to your uh, work area. Um, if I had my druthers, if I owned a place, uh, a house or something, I'd get a thousand gallon tank, right, and just stick it on the outside and just have it refilled by a big old machine or something like that, if I had the money to do that. But that'd be really cool, having a huge tank on the side of your house and just pull an uh, airline in at different rooms where I work. <laughs> that would be totally awesome. Okay, that's it for this uh, round robin video. Like, favorite, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them down here. Might be able to get them into the next uh, round robin. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. For more tutorial videos on how to paint your figures, check out Les's channel at Awesome Paint Job. For cool terrain tips and tutorials, check out Chris at Terrain New.